Hello everyone and welcome to another high elo game of Age of Empires. Today we're recovering from a fun night out with what we hope to be an epic clash between two titans of the game. We have in red Mr. Yo playing as the Khmer or the Kamai, however you want to pronounce it. And in blue, we have Hera playing as the Aztecs. Now while the players heard their herdables explore their immediate surroundings and try to go up to feudal as fast as possible, Let's take a look at the Civ matchup we'll be watching today. Now, the Khmer are a civilization that focuses on some of the heaviest hitting units in the game. Their scorpions have extra range and can be upgraded to shoot a second bolt. Their battle elephants move faster and can be upgraded to hit even harder with an extra plus three attack boost. And their unique unit, my god, is it quite possibly one of the hardest, most annoying units in the game to deal with. I am, of course, talking about the Ballista Elephant, which, as it sounds, is an elephant unit with a giant ballista mounted on its back that can also, by the way, be upgraded to shoot a second bolt. Now, in order to take advantage of these bonuses and upgrades and incredibly powerful units, the Khmer have to get up to Castle and Imperial as soon as possible with a lot of food in the bank. So to help them do this, they do get a couple of pretty cool bonuses. First, they do not need any structures to go up to the next age as long as you have the resources, meaning 500 food or 800 food, 200 gold. You can go up the second you gather those resources. Second, all buildings from your age are available to you at all times throughout that age, which means, for example, that you do not need to build a barracks in order to build a stable. And third and last, Khmer farmers are some of the most powerful in the game because they do not need to bring any food to a mill or a town center. As long as a Khmer farmer is working on a farm, it automatically adds the food to the stockpile. So Khmer can build farms literally anywhere on the map, does not have to be next to a town center, does not have to be next to a mill. Now, Khmer villagers are also pretty hard to raid, pretty hard to kill, because they can actually garrison inside these guys. I am talking about houses. And once the danger has passed, they can ungarrison from the house and get back to work. Now, in blue, we've got Hera playing the Aztecs, the quintessential warrior monk civilization. Aztec monks gain five hit points for every tech that they research. So a fully upgraded Aztec monk comes with a massive whopping 95 HP compared to their usual regular 30 of most other civilizations. Now, to help with the gold cost of upgrading your monks, which is significant, by the way, any relics that the Aztecs collect generate 33% more gold. Now, on the field of battle to support their monks, all Aztec military units are produced faster. All Aztecs, or rather Aztec skirmishers, can be upgraded to have extra range and extra attack. And all Aztec infantry can be upgraded to get a massive plus four attack boost across the board. This is great news for the unique unit of the Aztecs, the Jaguar Warrior. A middle of the road, I would say, maybe medium infantry unit that comes with a pretty strong attack bonus against other infantry. Now, to support Aztec military production and Aztec military adventures out on the map, these villagers carry three extra resources from the start of the game, and the Aztecs start with 50 extra gold in the bank. Take a look at the top right of your screen, 150 gold, which basically means they either get loom for free, or you can train two extra militiamen from the beginning to harass and annoy your opponent from the initial stages of the game. So we'll see how the players uh, decide to move forward with these two incredibly powerful civilization. Will Mr. Yo go Ballista Elephants? And if he does, will our blue Aztec Hera go Monk to convert those Ballista Elephants? Remember, Aztec Monk, some of the most powerful in the game, if not the most powerful in the game. In any event, let's take a look at their bases while they continue to explore the map, continue to build up their bases. For now, Mr. Yo going up to feudal first on the back of only 16 villagers, 19 villagers for Hera. He is a full minute and 20 seconds behind his opponent. His base completely open to the north, completely open to the west, the south, and the southeast. His primary gold, very forward, very uh, unsecure, would do well, I think, to take this hill. And so defend his gold pile for now. What is he building? A bunch of militias. This is the beauty of the Aztecs. Remember, the extra gold, you can always use it for more and more militias. Where is his primary stone? 
Is this his primary stone? Oh, lordy, it is incredibly far off campus. Very much, very hard to defend. Mr. Yo himself, I would say in a, a slightly better position here. The north of his base with the stone pile can be walled off without too much difficulty. The eastern portion completely open, though. So uh, he is creating some kind of mini wall off here. This is uh, not close to the north, not close to the west. So we'll see what the point of these structures is. And the west also completely open in his base. Hera discovering his opponent's exact location very early on in the game. Nine minutes in. Hera, I think, in my opinion, the best player for early game scouting. Uh, his scouting is just top notch. Mr. Yo, though, not to be outdone, has also discovered where his opponent is. So both players sitting on basically the same information at the moment. Although Hera moving forward now has hit feudal. These militias are now men at arms. Three of them with their Eagle Scout companion have moved forward. The scout decides to take him uh, to take the Eagle on. Will he take any damage from these men at arms? No, he will not. <coughs> And these two archers from Mr. Yo shoo away Hera's expeditionary force. What is Hera building behind this? Let's take a look. He's got his barracks that he built in the beginning. Walling off the north of his base. Walling off the east of his base. No feudal structures at the moment for our blue Aztec who continues building villagers. And continues circling the back of his opponent's base. I think he can turn around and take this fight. As opposed to taking more and more pokes and prods from these archers. Unfortunately, I think he is going to lose this one men at arms. Now, I think maybe he cannot take the fight. Let's see what our red Khmer is building. If anything, remember, Khmer do not need to build anything. They basically, whatever the hell they want, if it's available during that age, can build it. And they can go up to the next age without having the requisite structures. That's why you'll see. Take a look at the top right next to Hera. You see these two structures. Uh, that indicates that he needs two buildings to go up. Whereas if you take a look on the left side, our Khmer player, our Khmer player, does not need any structures whatsoever. Hera loses another man-at-arms. Good amount of scouting for him. I don't know if it was necessary to lose those two units right in the beginning. But for now, Mr. Yo building two more archers, moving to the front of Hera's base. He wants to keep an eye on his opponent just as his opponent is keeping an eye on him. I wonder why Hera is not engaging into these archers. I mean, the Eagle and the Man at Arms, I think, could have taken the fight earlier on. For now, though, I guess he's not really in aggression mode just yet. Scouting the extremities of his opponent's base, the perimeter, doing the usual strudel pattern of circling your opponent, circling your own base, discovering the, what's out on the map. Splitting up his units now runs into a Hakuna Matata situation here with zebras, ostriches, and camels all living in peace. This man-at-arms. Oh, he's taking a smoke break. Oh, and Hera loses his third man-at-arms. Kill count very much in favor of Mr. Yo at the moment. And now he's at the front here. Will manage to get a few skirmishers of Hera's. But Hera walling his himself in. Is this Palisade? No, Palisade is not complete. Oh, and Mr. Yo is just taking advantage of the confusion, the chaos that's happening here in the northwest of Hera's base. We'll get another kill. Nine kills to zero at the moment. Finally, Hera gets a notch on his belt, two notches on his belt, and these skirmishers should be able to do a pretty good job of zoning out these archers. These archers are incredibly weak. Their HP sitting at a third of what they should be. So these two skirmishers should be able to get these archers, especially with their one reinforcing friend. And now Hera has not evened up the kill count, but at least he's not at zero. Ten to five in favor of Mr. Yo, who continues to send archer units across the map. Let's take a look at their upgrades. Has he invested any resources? Yes, he's got a, the attack slash range upgrade. And this is what I was talking about. Take a look at Hera using his Eagle Scout. He sees the resources to the south he sees the resources to the north has mr yo invested no mr yo take a look i'm gonna zoom out he is basically interested in one thing and one thing only how can i attack my opponent for now does not give an s about any resources out on the map he just wants to know what the quickest route is to get to his opponent's base but unfortunately for him four skirmishers are blocking the path and he has invested basically only 
in archers. So skirmishers should do a good job of zoning those archers out. Hera's lumber camp coming under attack very slowly, very daintily being attacked here by one archer, which continues to remove one HP. These lumberjacks do not care. We'll have to move away, though, now that Mr. Yo has discovered this little nook. Where is Hera's eagle scout? Is he still in the south? Yeah, okay. I was wondering why uh, he didn't move him here to attack these archers. But he's continuing to explore, chasing the eagle scout, is chasing the eagle. Or is that a condor? Or is that a vulture? I don't know what it is in any event. We'll pretend it's an eagle just so the analogy, uh, just so the uh, the metaphor, whatever it is, makes sense. This lion activated the second he sees this red archer. And now we've got Mr. Yo taking on the cowardly, not so cowardly lion. Oh, and two skirmishers. Oh, <laughs> murder suicide here. <coughs> One dies, the other dies as well. Perfect pickup here for Hera. Removes two threats with one javelin. The archer killing the lion. The skirmishers killing the archer. But Mr. Yo is moving on the right side of the map now with what looks like a significant force. What do you have? Six, two is eight archers plus two more reinforcing archers. He is going up to castle. 30 or so seconds behind is Hera. So even though Hera has to build the requisite structures, let's see what he's built. A blacksmith, an archery range... And that looks like it for now. He is only 30 seconds behind. Not terrible at all. Mr. Yo building another archery range. So this will be two for him. A stable. Just like the Burmese stables, the Khmer stables are so awesome. First of all, you see a bunch of horse butts, which are incredibly adorable. You have, uh, I forget what the this, uh, the pattern is of the gray, uh, the, uh, the brown and white. And then you have this adorable elephant with the red tusks. Oh, yeah, he just he's having some good times there in the stable. Probably he's getting his feet washed or something like that, getting fed a watermelon for Instagram. Mr. Yo, though, attacking the front of Hera's base here. 11 crossbows, two scouts. What is Hera doing to defend this? His military count, not terrible at all. 11 skirmishers for him in 45 seconds. They will be elite skirmishers. So he just has to hold on here, has to distract his opponent for literally 35 more seconds. Let's see if he can do it. Another town center going up for our blue Aztec. Okay, the Spearman should be able to zone out. Oh, no, never mind. I was going to say the Spearman should be able to zone out the Scout Cavalry, but the Spearman not doing much. And now Mr. Yo is kind of trapped here. Town center fire, skirmisher fire. Hera playing this perfectly, luring his opponent into this kill, kill zone. And all of Mr. Yo's initial crossbows are now dead and the scout as well but we've got a knight coming in here this knight though has to be careful notoriously weak against things like town center fire our early castle knights beautiful location for a town center gets access to the gold lots of space for farms here mr yo with a very forward siege workshop let's see mangonel not surprising your opponent is massing skirmishers not a bad idea to go mangonels Although Hera, smartly not venturing out onto the map. Has he seen any inclination of this siege workshop? He has not. Instead, choosing to wall himself in. I wonder if he's planning on booming. I wonder what he's planning on doing. For now, three town centers to the one of his opponent. And take a look at the uh, food count on the top left of your screen. You see how it's going up one at a time, one at a time. This is the uh, power of the Khmer, the Khmer farmer bonus. They do not... Their farmers do not need, again, to drop anything off anywhere. As long as they're tilling those fields, the food count goes up. <clears throat> now Hera will know that there's a siege workshop somewhere because a Manganel shows up and starts shelling away at that town center. A second one, he should see this with his buildings. Needs to be incredibly careful here. Does take a terrible shot. Three spear uh, skirmishers do go down. A few more take some collateral damage. And what is Hera going to do behind this nine elite skirmishers? This knight has to be careful. Uh, yeah, you are tanky. Yeah, you are powerful. But numbers-wise, you are still weak. No upgrades whatsoever. 30 seconds away from having a defensive upgrade. More and more red dots. Let's take a look at uh, Mr. Yo's base. Hasn't really built a single new structure. Focusing all his construction, all his energy here in the center of the map. What is this one villager going to do? He's got a hammer in his hand, so he is going to build something. 
or maybe he just came from building something. The Manganel to the west also circling. This one to the south continuing to damage this town center. Heron not yet repairing it. This is why he's going to get out his own Manganel. We're going to see a good old-fashioned Mango War. Oh, he's going to get Mr. Yo's Mango, right? No, does take damage on his own. Oh, God, he's got to ungarrison the villagers ASAP. Oh, what a lucky, lucky break here for our blue Aztec player saving that Manganel. May wanna, might want to use these two villagers to attack this one, though. Now Hera is under siege from the south, from the west, from the north. What is he building? He is sticking on his nine skirmishers, exploding his villager count. I mean, the stats on these are identical. So now we are entering a battle of micro. Mr. Yo has to be careful here. He's shell shelling away at the town center. It has to be uh, cognizant of Hera's Manganel circling, getting repaired. Okay, Mr. Yo, uh, I guess taking a little break from the hostilities to build up his forces. He's going up to 20. Beautiful shot here by Hera. Manages to knock down one of Mr. Yo's Manganels. Takes minimal damage on his own. Let's see if he survives, though. Takes a bit more damage. Mr. Yo's Manganel also takes a bit more damage. Decides to destroy his own palisade. Oh, but Mr. Yo sees it. His micro just too good. You cannot sneak up on him. And let's see. Oh, no, Hera. Are you paying attention? His Manganel is on the high ground. So should be able to take a shot without dying. Which is exactly what happens. But now should retreat. Should repair a second town center. Finally going up for our red Khmer. This town center repaired to the point where it is no longer on fire. And now Hera's Manganels have switched, have shifted the theater of war south. Oh, he needs to take a shot right now. Yeah, that Mango's dead. Okay, beautiful shot here by Hera, who repairs his second Manganel as well. But crossbows tickling away at the HP here. What do we have in the north? We've got a bunch of elite skirmishers preparing to take on crossbows and one incredibly irate villager he is joining the fight what do we have here mangonels oh Hera has to be careful but so does mr yo this is exactly why i said he has to be careful oh god seven crossbows die but one villager does pay the price as does the mangonel to the north and now Hera using his villagers brilliantly. Let's see if he can survive here. The Manganel. Okay, he's repairing the Manganel. So he's going to survive. Takes the battle to the west handily. But now Mr. Yo is sending some reinforcements. A knight, a few crossbows. So Hera needs to be careful. Hera should see all of this movement, by the way. Yeah, he sees exactly where his opponent is going. He sees exactly where his opponent plans on attacking. Decides to wall himself off with a number of houses. Pulling a shit ton of villagers off the production line to do so. But what choice does he have? Third town center going up for our red Khmer. Who is not at all catching up to his opponent. Got husbandry. So these knights are going to be faster at 1.49. But Mr. Yo needs to get the villager count up. Hera deciding to delete palisades here. Is this the right move? I guess he feels confident enough with this many skirmishers that they can take on this knight for now though. They are on relax command, and this knight is going to try to get the mango. But we've got our first Aztec monk out on the field. This knight, okay, decides to either delete it or it died. I didn't click on the HP quick enough to know which it is. But now we've got Aztec monks. What do we got here? Redemption going down for our blue Aztec. So he's going to be able to convert siege weapons. He's going to be able to convert buildings. And let's see what he decides to use it for. Oh, look at this. Hera sending, what is it, seven villagers to the side here. This is the, uh, like I said, I think hands down Hera, the best early game scouter in Age of Empires 2. Take a look at how much of the map he's seen. He knows exactly where these resources are. Our red Khmer has seen nothing. He's seen the relic, which might put uh, Hera's base here in jeopardy if he ever decides to go out to get it. Unfortunately for Mr. Yo has not noticed the gold there, and so Hera should be able to get away with this town center for a little while or a long while. We'll see. Might get away with it the entire game. I have casted some games where uh, I think it was the Viper recently. He had an expansion in the north that just was not discovered by his opponent, 
and he just sucking up the resources on the map while his opponent had no clue that it was happening. Mr. Yo, though, okay. Crossbows. I mean, his army seems to be moving this way. Did he catch a glimpse of the uh, villagers? Oh, this might be a mistake by Hera, by the way. If you push your opponent back far enough, he might actually get vision here. So Hera has to be careful. Might want to let Red come forward here. Oh, no. Red now discovers this proxy base to the west. Yeah, I think Hera made a little mistake here. He does lose a monk as well to these light cab. By forcing his opponent backwards, he, Mr. Yo was able to get vision of this town center. Very unfortunate for Hera. And now his base is under attack by three light cab. Oh, no. What is he building in the center of the map? We've got stables, stables, and stables being plopped down for our Red Khmer, who continues to harass Hera. Seven kills on these cavalry units. Okay, Monk comes in, tries to get a convert, runs away to the town center. The town center should be able to get rid of these two. Hera building an incredibly defensive castle. Will it go up? He's 1,000 HP away from this castle going up. We've got crossbows trying to kill him. We've got mangonels trying to kill him. Yeah, this castle should go up, right? 47. Yeah, perfect. Perfect timing for Hera. Maybe you want to focus down the mangonel first. Oh, it doesn't really matter. Oh, God, these uh, crossbows. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic defense here for Hera. But his front is now under attack. He is investing now in eagles. These are eagle warriors. Neither player yet banking the necessary resources to go up to Imperial, although Mr. Yo banking a shit ton of gold for now. And the castle has gone up. Hera has to be incredibly careful. Now the center of his base is under attack. Oh, and the knights continue to get uh, deleted. By the way, monks, 55 HP to the 30 of his uh, opponents. If his opponent had monks, his opponent does not. Mr. Yo teefing the secondary stone pile of our blue Aztec. Hera needs to break this contain yesterday. He needs to start gathering these resources. I mean, this base is amazing. Uncontested at the moment. I don't think Mr. Yo, uh, if I had to guess, based on his structures, based on where he's pushing his units, I don't think he cares about that proxy base. He wants to end the game right now with a big push through the center. Lots of knights in production. More melee upgrades. Iron casting for him. And battering rams coming out as well. So, what is our Red Khmer building? Knights, Light Cav, Mangonels, and battering rams. This is an army designed to kill, designed to destroy, designed to knock your opponent into hell. But Hera, now with the Eagle Warriors, no attack upgrade on them just yet, though. And a beautifully placed castle, by the way, for Hera. I love this location. Uh, he needs murder holes, though, as does every player in this game. Again, not too sure why the pros never get murder holes. Might be uh, a million and one reason. These knights, let's take a look at their upgrades. Okay, they're at a plus two now. So the town centers are going to be less effective against them. Monks coming forward, shooing them away. Continuing to circle with these knights. Let's see where he decides to deploy them. Mr. Yo, take a look at the villager kills. 60 villager kills for our Red Khmer, doing an amazing job of raiding the shit out of Hera, sending these knights in here, although with the castle for backup, if Hera reacts in time and garrisons these villagers, these knights are all going to die. Not exactly the best exchange in the world, although is it really meant to be, or is it meant to be a distraction to allow Mr. Yo to put up this castle? Might just decide to throw away some of these knights to distract his opponent while how many villagers 10 villagers come in here although Hera plopping up another castle another town center so this is the beauty of high elo players i mean you don't get higher than uh, Hera who i believe at the moment is the number one player in the world with 2800 plus elo but this is the wonder of these kinds of players like Hera like Mr. Yo you attack him in the center and like, uh, who was it, Bruce Lee said, you flow like water. He is, instead of 
collapsing under the pressure. He is instead expanding to the sides with a town center, with a castle. He is adapting to the situation at hand, although now this gold is no longer mineable. 1,480 gold <clears throat> lost because of the placement of this castle. Hera first to click up to Imperial, 2 minutes 40 seconds away. He needs to get Trebs out immediately. He needs to get rid of these castles that are starting to ring his base. And he lost control of his primary stone, uh, gold. This is uh, bad news bears for Hera here. He needs to find a source of gold. I mean, it says he's got 13 villagers on gold, but what? Okay, yeah, so he's got one last gold patch here. These are the 13 villagers. How much is left here? 2,100. Okay, so enough to sustain them for the short term. Oh, no. Unless this castle goes up. In which case, this gold is yet again lost. And now Hera is sitting on zero gold miners. His opponent very close to going up to Imperial himself, raiding the back of Hera's base. These monks hide in the town center after trying to convert. How much HP on them now? Still 55. But Hera getting the pike upgrade, getting squires. He wants to combat these fast-moving raiding units with his own stronger Aztec infantry. Remember, the Aztecs do have access to uh, that Garland War upgrade, which gives their infantry just a massive plus-four attack boost across the board. And so with a few well-placed pikemen, now that he's got some defensive castles up, Hera should be able to defend against all kinds of raiding. But now we've got castle wars here. Is anyone here on a high ground? 31, 24, should be 16, 15. Yeah, so he's taking 8 damage. 10 damage. Yeah, so it looks like Hera's castle is on the higher ground based on the amount of HP that keeps going down. Mr. Yo's raiding has stopped for the moment. And that's because he's building Ballista Elephants. You love to see these guys. I mean, look at this unit. Look at this incredibly wonderful unit. Such a pain in the ass to deal with. A quiver full of massive human-killing arrows, projectiles, whatever you want to call them. A huge Ballista on his back. Hera is in a bit of trouble here. How is he going to respond to these Ballista Elephants? Block printing is nice. His monks are going to have three extra range. And once that research, take a look in 10 seconds at the HP of the monks. Like I said, every upgrade, they get five extra HP. So this should jump in to 60 exactly. And now the range jumps up to 12. These monks are going to be deadly. Hera, what is this man at arms? Where is he? Okay. Uh, I wonder if this is just a remnant of the earlier game. Hera now trying to raid himself, although not really looking, attacking two houses castles continue to fire on each other but i heard a treb yes okay so we have our first treb out on the map hera loses it unfortunately to these light cab to these knights his slower moving infantry no attack upgrades on them just yet do not manage to save his trebuchet and now we've got these ballista elephants how many six of them out on the map conscription being researched for our red khmer so his units are going to be uh, produced much quicker. <laughs> Very cheeky movement here by Hera. Builds a mining camp, realizes that his opponent already has encircled all of the gold. Now decides to build a mining camp. We'll find out that he cannot. And now, oh no, we'll lose all these villagers to the knights. Oh, what a bad, bad pickup for Hera. What a fantastic pickup for our Red Khmer who continues to attack the center, but does lose a castle. Hera starting to push back the red tide of Khmer aggression. Khmer castle going down in the west, uh, east rather. Khmer castle going down in the north. Khmer castle in the center, also under attack here by two trebs. Hera with four trebs. Where are the ones in the north? They need to move forward ASAP. Although maybe not really, this castle is not defended at all, so these two traps do manage to gun it down. Three castles going down in the span of a few minutes here for Mr. Yo. But Hera, still, these units have no attack upgrade whatsoever. Instead, choosing to go with hand card. Okay, not a terrible move. 
Hassar is now out for our Red Khmer. This is going to be very deadly. Hera has to station all of his army here to protect against any kind of raiding from this gold. This gold is his only lifeline right now. Although should be able to take this pile as well. Yeah, okay. Hera. How many of us would have been able to reclaim these two gold piles? Especially in the face of ballista elephants. In the face of three castles. What is he getting here? Theocracy. Okay, so basically theocracy. If a group of monks uh, converts a unit, only one of them has to regenerate their faith, I believe. Uh, which is theocracy. And now we've got Pike against Ballista Elephants. Hera is going to discover that Pike are not exactly the strongest unit against these Wadley boys. Oh, look at their adorable little butts. Look at their wrinkly, adorable butts. I love this. Sorry, guys. I, I, I'm fanboying out a little bit. Hera does lose his town center here in the, uh, let's call this the Northwest. And now Red is streaming into the side of his base. Mr. Yo taking the punches, losing his castles. But finally, returning the favor. His military supply, though, basically half of Hera's. Hera also getting fervor. His monks are going to move quicker. Elite Eagle Warrior, ma plate mail armor. So he is starting to upgrade his infantry. No attack upgrades just yet. Being attacked to the north here by these Hussars. Oh, God, their uh, pierce armor should be pretty good. Yeah, six pierce armor for them. Knights in the back of Hera's base, but Hera also putting on his own aggression. How many kills? Five kills for this knight. And he has reclaimed the center after, what, 40, 30 minutes of Mr. Yo just dominating the center of the map. Hera has finally been able to throw off the Khmer yoke and expand to the center, do some raiding of his own. We've now got Hussar on Hussar action. Finally. Finally, an attack upgrade for his melee units who are sitting at a massive plus zero. Ballistics as well. Mr. Yo getting Blast Furnace. That is an incredibly long upgrade to research. And so it's good that he got it out of the way. Remember, Aztecs do not get Halberdiers, which is severely going to impact Hera's ability to battle, to fight these Ballista Elephants, which for now are just hanging out clumped. One of them on death's door, but seven of them pretty damn healthy. And let's see if we are shaping up to see a battle here. More raiding by our red Khmer. The Khmer just so fantastic at late game raiding because of their farming bonus. Again, remember, these guys just auto-generate food. So you don't get more food. You just get, I think, your food faster. And now the pike moving forward. What is this? Garland Ward? Yes. So take a look in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Take a look at the bottom of your screen. 4 plus 1 should become 4 plus 5. And now these pike are going to be super deadly, but with the Hussar meat shield and the ballista elephants shelling away from the back, these pike are all dying. This is exposing the weakness of the Aztecs here. The lack of halberdier really is problematic for Hera. We'll see if he can overcome it by massing more and more pike. He's going up to 45 pike, 21 elite eagle warriors. Trebs shelling away at each other. Rather, Mr. Yo's Trebs are shelling away at Hera's while Hera is attacking this castle. Unfortunately, I think Mr. Yo is going... Or unfortunately for Hera, I think Mr. Yo is going to save this castle. Once that second Treb went down... Yeah, Mr. Yo is buying stone. He, want, he does not want this castle to fall, even though he's got a few castles here to the south. But the battle firmly in the center of the map. What do we have here? A couple of Hussars with three kills to their name. But Hera is now raiding with Aztec Eagles. Exactly what they are designed to do. For some reason focused on a uh, defunct lumber camp. Oh my god. These Ballista Elephants are such a pain in the ass to deal with. Now 14 of them. Hera basically needs to deal with 14 Ballista Elephants. I would say he needs, what, four or five times that many Pike? Especially if they're in a castle zone, especially if there's a few Hussars here to tank for them. The players disengage temporarily. A bit of a peaceful colony of an Aztec house next to a Khmer stable. And now Mr. Yo is moving forward with a death ball of 17 Ballista Elephants. But here come those Aztec monks. Like I said, this is exactly what I was hoping for in the beginning of the game. The powerful monks against the powerful Ballista Elephant. Run away, run away, run away. Yes, heal your unit up. 
Hassar is being more and more annoying, though. Hera, 25, 24 villagers on gold. How many Hassars have died to this castle? 37 kills on this castle. Fantastic. Fantastic castle placement by Hera, although he will lose another Treb. Very unfortunate for him. Cannot... Oh, oh my god, he did not lose the Treb. <laughs> Fantastic play here. Uh, I was going to say, he cannot afford to lose any gold unit. You know, lose villagers all the live long day. That's what they're here for, to die. But if you're starting to lose heavy gold units... Where is his Treb? Am I missing it? Oh, yeah, there's the outline next to the villagers. Okay, so they've repaired the treb. I couldn't see it with all the confusion. Hera sitting on the one ballista elephant that he did convert. But a few more hussars peel off to the north. Let's see what they can get done. Are there even any villagers left here? Not many. And this castle, 17 kills. I mean, Hera's castles so far have been the MVPs of this matchup. Hussar thinks he can take on... How many is this? 42 uh, Pike on his own. Discovers very quickly that he cannot and dies. But now we've got 24 Ballista Elephants. They are hungry for blood. They know that one of their fellows has been converted. Oh, possibly three more converts. Another convert for Hera. But that converted Ballista Elephant dies immediately. Uh, Mr. Yo doing, by the way, a fantastic job of zoning out these Aztec monks with his Hussars. Although now, Hera will get three more Ballista Elephants. Oh no, but does end up losing his Trebs. Oh, this is incredibly sour here for Hera. This is his last Treb. He is building two more. This castle has still not gone down, and it will not go down as Mr. Yo manages to snipe that one treb oh god just send a villager oh but he doesn't have a villager and now finally this hero castle that had a huge number of kills does pay the price does go down and now the hussars are free to stream in here but stream in here to do what all the villagers are dead at best they'll kill a zebra and an ostrich Hera sending his own hussars to defend this defunct base of a bunch of farms and let's see what it can do. I mean, not a bad idea to go mass uh, infantry for the Aztecs. Look at this. Plus six attack on them. Still missing the final upgrade, though. So not as strong as they could be. This one monk tries to convert. Will he die? He should die. No, again. Hera saves it. The micro out of Hera is just incredible. Able to save that Treb, able to save that Monk, but the question is, even though he's got the army supply lead, take a look at his villager count. He has just lost too many villagers, and now he's in a position where he's got almost no food. He's being attacked everywhere. Will he get another convert on this elephant? No, it dies. And now this Treb will take this castle down. If this castle goes down, oh no, I, I was going to say, if this castle goes down then basically Hera is dead because now his entire base is open. I mean, look, as I was about to say, Hera is at that unfortunate situation at the very late game where you have almost no food and no villagers. And so he has to decide where he wants to allocate his incredibly scarce resources. Does he want more villagers? Does he want more units? Although with almost 100 army supply, let's take a look at why he resigned. I mean... Let's try to get into his head. In the center here, he continued to shell away at this castle, but would have eventually lost the Treb to these two Trebs, maybe some Hussars. Hussars being thrown away by Mr. Yo. You know, Khmer Hussars are just so incredibly annoying. Their farm bonus just gives them the ability to collect food so much quicker, and those uh, Hussars just get pumped out. Mr. Yo basically peacocking here <laughs> with these 20 Ballista Elephants. Hera sees it. This is his vision. So he knows these elephants are here. Mr. Yo doesn't even need to use them. And I think, again, Hera with 23 stone, no stone miners. The second he loses this castle, it's basically game over. You can have as much army as you want, but your Chimera opponent has pushed you into a corner. Look how many defunct farms there are, how many... Uh, just pieces of land 
that are not being tilled by Hera's villagers because Hera has no villagers to till them with. They are here gathering lumber. Let's take a look at his villager allocation right before he died. 28 on lumber, 17 on food. So, and 26 idols. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Unfortunately, I think uh, Mr. Yo's rating was just too much for Hera. Hera trying to clump his units here in the center of the map. Maybe would have done well to throw these units away and, and just attack the uh, Trebs so that this castle could go down or just shift eastward and attack these uh, Ballista Elephants. Unfortunately for him, though, nothing left to defend this castle. 13 monks. 13 monks is fantastic. Unfortunately for him, they are busy dealing with Hussars. And look at them undefended here. How many monks is this? Seven monks undefended. So half of his most powerful unit are really about to die. The, the uh, Treb dies here. He's got one last Treb here in the center, which is at half health. And so Hera just ripped apart by the quicker moving army of Mr. Yo. I think he could have possibly contested these 20 Ballista Elephants with a combo of Monks and Pike. The problem is, had he moved east, Mr. Yo would have just shifted north. And now he's got two Trebs in this vicinity. Just move them north, attack this castle. If Hera moves to defend here, use your army in the south. And even though, again, take a look, Hera has double the army supply. He just does not have the mobility uh, to defend on multiple fronts because his army supply is greater, but it's 75 pikemen. Remember, again, Aztecs do not get halberdiers. 257 Hussars, 141 pike, 169 peak APM to 140, so a good amount of APM from both players. Let's take a look at the economy. Hera, with more relics, does have a 1,000 more uh, gold. And take a look at this. I am shocked at this, that Hera, even with a 1,000 extra gold, did mine more gold than his opponent. I for sure thought that his uh, gold mining was stymied when he lost control here of the center gold and then the gold here to the north. But no. Uh, incredible, incredible economic uh wherewithal here by our blue Aztec, although take a look at the stone. Mr. Yo Tiefing, this is why he was down in gold, because he was focusing all his energy on stone. Food also significantly not outnumbering his opponent. Wood count basically identical. Not surprised about the food, though, because again, Hera was just raided to kingdom come. Oh, God, let's take a look at the kill count. Mr. Yo killing just under 500 units. Half of that is villagers, 200 and 56 villagers killed by our red Khmer Hera, only managing to kill 23. So he did kill more military, but at the end of the day, just could not sustain the civilian population needed to fight off this multi-pronged attack. Mr. Yo, by the way, doing an incredible job keeping Hera on his toes. You do not want to let a player as good as Hera set the pace of the game, because if he does you die. And so Mr. Yo taking an aggressive stance. Let's take a look. I'm going to zoom out. Apologies to anyone on a smaller screen. I just want to see Hera's production facilities. Eight barracks. Okay. How many monasteries? Three monasteries. Mr. Yo, on the other hand, only five stables. Archery ranges, only two. Okay, so neither player really investing heavily into uh, production facilities. I guess they were happy to just clash and clash and clash over and over again. And overall, though, Mr. Yo just oh, ransacking Hera's base to the north, ransacking his proxy expansion to the east, getting into this uh, juicy farmland here in the center with his uh, incredibly fast-paced Hussars. Look how quick they move. 1.61. Even the Eagles, which is the fastest unit Hera has, only move at a 1.43. So while they were able to do some damage here, not at all the damage that Hera needed to get done, Mr. Yo with the multi-pronged attack with the lightning attack takes the W, but wow, GG to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.